Welcome to Weekly Homilies with Father Mark Sislanko, pastor of Saints Isidore and Maria Parish in Glastonbury, Connecticut, part of the Catholic Archdiocese of Hartford. I'm Carol Vassar, Parish Director of Communications. You are listening to Season 3, Episode 30, for the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, August 9th, 2020. Our Gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea— When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. There is so much in our lives that can distract us, call us to focus our attention outside of ourselves, preoccupy us, and even overwhelm us. We can find ourselves going through the motions of life, reacting more to what is happening around us, the latest news, the latest events, the latest storm, the next crisis, whatever it is that is bringing its world into ours can easily consume us. In the midst of all of those distractions, we bring our faith. And sometimes we look for God outside of ourselves as a solution to all of those things that are happening. Wondering perhaps if God can somehow break into this experience and fix it all again, to bring it back to the way it's supposed to be or could be, to alleviate all of these stresses, these problems, these hurdles, these hurtful moments, these challenges, and restore peace again. It's quite natural as a person of faith to expect God's voice to come out of the clouds, to cause something to shake humanity up, to wake us up in some fashion. But then in the midst of our distracted and preoccupied lives, we don't see God doing much of that. And a person who's struggling with faith can find themselves also concluding that either God doesn't care or maybe it is just the fact that there is no God. We find ourselves wanting to listen for God's voice in the places it's least likely to be heard. It is only in silence that we can truly hear the whisper of God's voice. God's presence is so gentle, unassuming, loving, all-encompassing, that it can so easily be missed. It's no wonder even Jesus himself, overworked and tired, overwhelmed at what people were expecting of him and from him, found himself quite often leaving all of that distraction, leaving 
all of those preoccupations, relieving all of, leaving all of those obligations to go off to a place by himself and be quiet. We can assume that some sacred moments were found in that sacred silence where he was able to meet his father in a very special and intimate way a way undivided and focused. Even throughout the history of our church, you know, during the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th century, some amazing folks flourish and become our spiritual mentors and our guides. People like St. Francis of Assisi, St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila, and countless others who bring with us to us so many pearls of wisdom about how to embrace our relationship with God, how to nurture our relationship with God, and how to find God. All of them realized very soon off that they had to remove themselves from life's distractions, find that quiet place to ponder, to think, and to pray. You see, part of the problem with faith today is that we don't see value in spending time alone in silence. There's always too many things to do, something else that can captivate us, someone else who needs us. It's so easy to find excuses not to be alone, but it's only in finding that gift of silence that we can begin to allow God to connect the dots of our lives, where we begin to see and experience within ourselves the greater dimensions of love and blessing that are a part of the world that God places us in and before us. It is in those moments of silence that we can experience an intense oneness with all of creation and with my brothers and sisters. It is in the gift of silence as it doesn't matter who I really am or what I look like, what color my skin is, or what I do for a living. In moments of silence, I am linked with all that is and all that breathes. In moments of silence, I can touch base with the ground of eternity and receive a divine kiss from God. It is in moments of silence that my authentic and true self can come to light, that I can see myself for who I am and God for who he is. It's harder for us to deceive ourselves in moments of silence. We see ourselves as we are for who we are, our graces, our blessing, our weaknesses, and our sinfulness, those things we do well and those things we don't do so well. We see our vulnerability and we encounter our dependency on someone with a capital S greater than ourselves. You see, it is in moments of silence when we become friends with that sacred space that we also then find ourselves becoming friends with God who lives in that silence. We become friends with God who reaches out to us and says, trust me, take my hand, you will not fall. When life gets difficult and turbulent, when it gets confusing and doubtful, when it gets hurtful and overwhelming, And we feel like we're sinking in the midst of all of the mire of the experience of being human. God reaches out and says, take my hand, you will not fall. But if we're looking to the earthquake or to the thunder or to the distractions or to the magnitude of things for a sense of where God is, we will not find him there because he comes in the gentleness of his presence found only in the whispers of silence. And so the challenge for us is to embrace the silence, 
to somehow in our own unique ways carve out space in our lives to be alone and to listen, to be alone and find sacred time. Because then when we go back out into the world, the discipline that we find in those early moments of embrace can then be brought to the noisiness of life. And even in the midst of the frustrations and the confusions, the noise and the clangs, and all that happens around us, we will find ourselves being more at peace and living more silently ourselves. And so as we go back into the busyness and the demands of our ever-changing world and church, may we do so always pursuing the path to silence and listening for God in the whispers that we find within. Father Mark Sislanko is the pastor of Saints Isidore and Maria Parish in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Learn more about our parish community at isidoreandmaria.org and follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our music comes free of charge from Blue Dot Sessions in Fall River, Massachusetts. I'm Carol Vassar. Thanks for listening. Thank you.